container, container, I'll turn you nice and red. Container, container, put the logos on. So this is Leo. He must be the aide for Everard. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he is Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisunt on Moindi. Container, container, used to be Walpines. Container, container, now belongs to Everard. Hi, do not interrupt the man in his joyous activity. Don't say hi. Everard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? A shadow passes over his kind face. What is it with you people and scabs? Actually, I am, yes. Well, I'm not a scab, so... What is it with you people and scabs? I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks is just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. He doesn't seem to be waiting for you to answer. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. You're Ubi, right? What are you doing with the containers? Where is everyone? The hub is empty. Do you work here? Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? What's in the container over there? Point to the container. I'm looking for the leader. Okay, I'm off. All right, let's go through them. You're Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. I was about 10 then. Too old to lose my accent then. People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Mm -hmm. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. What are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. Okay, look at the mountains of containers rising behind him. This is a red check. It cannot be retried. Okay, I did lose a point of logic. And I can't check my inventory, so let's come back to this. Sure, mister. About what? Where is everyone? The harbor's empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. He leans in with a confidential look. We're on a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. Ha! We haven't worked for two months now. But how do you get paid? So no one is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Everard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gate. He pauses to think. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Everard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. He stops, but seems eager to tell you more. What kind of trouble did Titus and friends get into? Got it, but there are other things I need to discuss. What kind of trouble did this Titus and his friends get into? Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. He smiles and leans closer. Him and his boy stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Everett telling him to take some time off. But what did they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Got into a fight, Easy, okay. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the hearties. He looks to you for assistance. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Hmm. I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. Let's keep these this on the hardies. Look at him. It's not going to be useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go into a flow. Who rowdy? Leo, what kind of a fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Or let's hear about the fight you got into. Now, let's keep it on track. What Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's mouth is still moving, and the words are spewing forth. Words, words, and look, even more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. Well, that's not a bad thing. Someone who is talkative is more useful than someone that's going to just keep silent. Now, he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who... No, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there with your questions. Try this again. So oh, harbor's empty. So no, no one's working. Titus and his boys got into some. Uh, what oh, kind of trouble? Him and his boy stirred up something really? Did they kill someone? No, I don't think they killed anyone. Let's better talk about something else. Titus and his boys do good work. I don't want to get them in trouble over a little drinking. He probably doesn't know anything anyway. Who in their right mind would tell him? 
Let's hear about the fight he got into. Oh, we're on a so <laughs> not, but Titus. Oh, I'm him and his boy. I guess the boy. Easy. Look at him. It's. I remember I was the runt of the class. <laughs> the bigger boys always used to pick on me. You see, I had a bit of a temper back in the day. Flew off the handle like nobody's business. But Miss Evra and his brother always came to help. Once they beat old Noel Becker so bad he needed stitches on his head. <laughs> Noel never started another fight with anyone after this. So this is why Leo follows Evra, because he came to help him when he was younger. Mr. Evra and Mr. Edgar are real nice guys, mister. You should go talk to Mr. Evra. I'm sure you'll be good friends. He's friends with everyone around here. <coughs> hmm. You're never getting anything useful out of him. It's good enough you found out Everard has a brother called Edgar, and he helped Leo. Hmm. Uh, do you work here? Yes, yes. Everybody needs a job, and this is mine. I'm Leonard, by the way. Leonard Bellet. But everyone calls me Leo. The little man raises his hand in a welcoming gesture. I'm like Mr. Everard's right-hand man when Mr. Edgar is out of town, and Mr. Edgar's right-hand man when Mr. Everard is away. <laughs> Actually, Miss Beaufort is the right-hand man, but she's a lady. <laughs> okay. Who is this, Miss Beaufort? The lieutenant looks up at Leo. A real pretty lady with a skin like those Douai Sucre candy bars my missus likes so much. They're my real nice to suckle on once the dinner is done and me and the missus sit down besides the radio. But I can't listen to the radio all the time. There's so much to do around here and I'm always busy keeping things running here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Stay on this Miss Beaufort topic. Hold on, who's this Miss Beaufort you mentioned? Oh, Lizzie. She is a real sharp tool. Mr. Everett put her through some fancy school and everything, east of the river. Four years she was gone, and when she came back, she was all fancy and lawyerly. He respects that word. That's obvious. But she's a real nice girl. Grew up in this here neighborhood knows everybody and gets along with everyone. Real pillar of the community one day, I'm sure. If me missus and me was to have a child, I'd be real happy if she turned out like her. But she can't have kids. How come? Dr. Lemaitre said so. And she knows about such things. Been a doctor for almost 50 years she has. He sighs and falls silent watching you meekly with his blue, blue eyes. So ever a trained a lawyer named Miss Beaufort. Interesting. I think you're doing a great job around here, Leo. I'm pretty sure this place would totally fall apart if you didn't shine the boss man's shoes, Leo. Alright, well that's being a bit condescending towards it. So I'll just say, yeah, you're doing a great job. Yes, this place really seems to run like clockwork. Keep it up, Leo. Goodest of the good cops. Alright, let's see what this trophy is, actually. Really get Kim to trust you? Interesting. I wonder if that's do 10 good cop actions in the playthrough. Well, thanks a lot. Coming from you, it means a lot, really. You didn't think it was possible, but the smile becomes even wider. Sometimes I feel some of the guys don't really get how much I bust my ass for them here. But you guys are all right. Are you the Leo who wrote the note to make more banners? Oh, yes, yes. I leave all kinds of notes for myself. That old head of mine ain't so good at keeping things in no more. I almost forgot about the borscht. Also, uh, let's just double check. Yes, good cop, bad cop is now at 10, so that's what the trophy was for. Uh, what was that about the borscht? Oh yes, I've been taking special whirling borscht to the men every day since the strike started. <laughs> special whirling borscht. It's very, very good. Makes a man feel so warm and happy. I feel like I could take on Mr. Renadam's boar dogs every time the lunch is done. What do you mean by taking the soup to the men? Is it for striking? Yes, yes. I'm taking it to them. The borscht keeps them happy and in fighting spirits. Makes you all warm inside. They brew it in the whirling in rags. Hold up, who makes it at the whirling? Oh, the whirling's cook. He makes it. Them is always talking with Mr. Manana in that weird language and laughing together. He doesn't speak what we speak. He's from Grad. So that's why we couldn't speak to the cook before. He's from Grad. Something is off about this borscht. I'm going to look into it. Oh, sure, mister. Sure. You do that. Yes, sir. He didn't actually understand what you meant, and now he's just nodding along. Okay, uh, what's in that container over there? Oh, that one. That should be empty as far as I know. 
Lots of containers here have nothing in them. They're just waiting to be loaded up. Okay, I'm looking for the leader of the dock workers union. Oh, you want Mr. Everard then? He's an awfully nice fellow, he is. Him and his brother are both nice fellows. They've lived their entire lives in this here neighborhood. He coughs and continues immediately. Guys like Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar, his brother, are real good guys. Made Martinez what it is today. Mr. Ever and Mr. Edgar and I went to the same school we did when we were boys. Which we found out because he talked about the fight. Easy now, Leo. I just want to know where I can find this man. Oh, Mr. Everard is usually in his office, of course. But he already left for the day. He always leaves around 10 p.m. Oh, okay. Interesting. It says 22, but he says 10 p.m. All right. He does have a check about the container, so I am bye going bye to now. try that. I am going to save scum it, but we'll see how it goes. I might pass it first time. Who knows? It is an even chance, and I do have a thought that is taking logic points away from me. So, oh yeah, and this pay for damages task got updated as well. Try negotiating. We'll see how that goes. Oh, yeah. hey, mister. I knew you'd be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They could only get so far before they're aching to get back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. I had some questions for you if that's not too much trouble. No trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. It's like that old saying goes, wisdom withers if not shared. And old Leo is always up for sharing. Um, all right, what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers. OK, here. so yes, let's I try am. the check. Yes, I am. So it's the containers in the yard are green in Wild Pines livery, and the mountains rising behind Leo is all red in union colors. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard's core. There appear to be cisterns underneath the Union container covers. So, this looks like a massive redecorating operation, Kim. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? What's underneath the red covers? Uh, it looks like a redecorating operation, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers have the Debarders Union logo on them. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Says I go and tell them to everyone. That is probably very accurate. What's underneath the red covers? Oh, I don't know, mister. They say it's some chemicals. Most of them have labels on them, I think. All right. Thanks, Leo. You've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. All right. I'm off. Oh, all right. Well, let's make another save because we just passed that check. Okay, so this is Mr. Everard's office, but he's gone for the day. But the doors are open. So... Yeah, some coffee station. A large table with two huge vacuum-insulated thermal coffee dispensers. Someone has forgotten a small plastic card next to the stacks of cups. Pick up the card. You snatch up the red plastic card. It features a black contour of a crane lifting a container. The name Etienne Ogart is written in the middle. Below it, in smaller text, member of the board. It comes with a magnetic strip meant to open electronic doors. So now I can get in and out. Cool. All right, so let's double check uh, the item, or is it a tool? I guess it's just a tool. No, it doesn't seem to be. Da, da, da. Oh, I guess it's not actually. Maybe it just counts as a key. Does it count as a key? Okay, so. Yeah, it just counts as a key, so I can get in and out. Oh, what's up here? They're made of pallets leading up. desk has been cleaned out for the night. Taxidermy fish that tells time. Alright, so I'm going to assume there's nothing else I can do here while Everard is not in his office. And as it said, the desk has been cleaned out for the night, so I can't do anything else really. A smart man doesn't leave any incriminating documents behind. Alright, that, yeah, we know who we are dealing with. Or at least we have an idea of who we are. Uh, okay. 
I'm trying to get back down the stairs. Okay. Oh, there we go. I just went left. All right. Well, because Everard's not there, nothing to do. Uh, there's nothing to do with Leo. So yeah, so they are covering up blocks. Yeah, so the electronic key card doesn't do anything for me. Alright. So now we're heading back towards where the crane was. Uh, what was that thought? Come on. Thought. There we go. Valsun means whale fjord in Arda. Okay. Alright. Crane. A rust marsh with a loud grind. The crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Oh, it's actually putting it down. So we might be able to inspect it. Okay. towards us and with a surprisingly quiet thunk the crane places the container down the harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance the crane can rest again now that its purpose has been fulfilled its purpose what do you mean moving this container of course for this purpose it was built for this purpose it has acted and now it will rest I can't see how that was worth the wreckers, except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Okay. If I leave, does that mean that the crane is still going to move? Let's find out. Before you stands a cargo container, just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. You do? Because I don't. What? Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? It was hanging from the cane, a crane. I don't know, Kim, it just feels special. Maybe there's contraband in there. You're right, it's probably nothing. It was hanging from the crane. You just picked one up because you wanted to interact with a cargo container. Why would they leave a cargo container in the crane lift itself? Why not empty it for the day? We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to talk to the union, right? Knock on the door. No reply. The knot produces a hollow ring of metal. Doesn't sound like there's anything inside the container. Open the door. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. To your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some puzzlement. <clears throat> Impossible. Persuade the door to open. It's a white check. Erratic yet thorough. I mean, there's a 3% chance it passes. Why are you even trying to open a door with rhetoric? Because guessing physical wasn't an option. Because what wasn't an option? Using my body of my wits. Now is not the time to get philosophical, detective. You can do that after hours. All right, I don't think I'll be able to do this. I mean, let's see. I can get rhetoric up to, what, 10? So 18, it's not too far away, actually. Um, nothing more to do for now. Wait, uh, there was another You're set of things I could do. Container. No reply. The no. knot produces a yep. intent to your left. The yeah. lieutenant considers okay. your right. Alright, nothing else to do. Alright, but if I press stop, what does that actually do with the container now? A rusting control panel. The crane does not return to its original position. It does not move at all. No screech of metal when you push the button this time. Only silence as the crane remains in its state of dormancy. That's good. It means I don't have to keep checking it. All right. Let's leave it for now. So, if I increase my rhetoric enough, I might be able to persuade the door to open by itself. Alright. So, carry on looking around here. This is not something I can do. Yeah. So, that goes flashes red. There's nothing this else to do here. Yeah. Alright, well, we got the key card, so we can go back. So let's head in that direction, shall we? Hmm. 
Okay, and then we try the door. Uh, come on, try the door. There we go. Alright, so we're up here now. So what does this do? In case of a strike, press button behind guard. So this is where we were before when they were talking about yeah, the easygoing guy at the, the stairs and they were talking about the dock worker strike. Uh, what? Okay. For some reason the game doesn't want to let me go down here. Right, can I interact with anything go down that way? Yeah, for some reason the game will not let me go down the stairs. Hmm. Alright, well I guess I'm not going that way. I have to go through uh, Measurehead. Unless... Can I select the money? No, I don't think I can, can I? Alright, I don't have an option. I have to go this way. So, let's make a save. Proper save. Okay, so... Measurehead is a powerful man, not soft and weak like other men. I kind of just want to get past. And these are not people I can talk to, so... Uh, yep, I can't walk past him either. Alright, let's talk to Measurehead. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Say nothing, size him up first. What do you mean, my body betrays my degeneracy? My body does not betray my degeneracy. My body is unimportant, I'm with the police and we need to get that corpse down from the tree. We don't have time to get into this now. Let's size him up first. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. You must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm sandwiched. You are not in danger, because you are not a threat to me. Without your chest and still say nothing. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? He looks down at you, taking stock of your physique. You hear your heart pumping, fast and irregular. Your joints ache and you feel old, but still alive, somehow. Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman and your pedomorphic friend. What is pedomorphic supposed to mean? <laughs> this display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean-Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? My body does not betray my degeneracy. Body's important, unimportant. We don't, we need to get the corpse down. We don't have time to get into this now. What do you mean my body betrays my degeneracy? You have succumbed to Al-Ghul. His face contorts in disgust as if he was smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible sword of Al-Ghul emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Wait, um, Al Ghul? Yes, Al Ghul. Alcohol? He means alcohol. You mean alcohol? Understood. Right, it, I, under, I know he means alcohol, so understood. I doubt it, my microcephalic race servant. Now your breath. Kim, is it really that bad? It's not good. It's like a rat crawled into your stomach. Got drunk and drowned. You're right, I'm an alcoholic, now I need to enter the harbour. I don't have a problem with alcohol, I just need to drink a little on the weekends. Right, well this is lying to myself, so yes, I'm right, I'm an alcoholic. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Does this remind you of someone? The guy down there? 
That fat racist over there, point to the racist lorry man, if he's still even there, you're just him after pumping some iron. I'm the police and I need you to comply now. Take a step closer. The race stuff is unimportant here. I just need you to help me do my job, please. I mean, okay. So I have pretty low physique. I mean, my endurance is four, which is pretty good. So I could probably survive a few punches. Um, the first option is antagonizing him. Uh, does pointing it out make him angry? This is not going to work because I have minus two authority. So that's not going to work. The race stuff is unimportant. I just need you to help me do my job. He also does not seem very willing to help. Well, we'll see what he goes out with this. Look at my craniology. I am the pinnacle of my ablock hook. The pink blob is a bad example, even of yours. It saddens. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, Bay? It is, baby. Yeah, you know it. You're right about all this. Now I just need you to let me go into the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of Al Hul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the odes to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalic skulls. We could internalize Measurehead's race theory. It would enrich you rhetorically. Right, good idea. Or wouldn't that mean I have to become a semi supremacist myself? Yeah, doesn't that mean that? Well, not as such. What you do with the mastery of advanced race theory is up to you. You could reject the findings, sure, or accept them become an advanced racist advanced racist okay don't be an asshole to your fellow dock worker show him the stolen id card you serve the union don't you aren't they white know anything about this mug show him the mug what are the tattoos supposed to mean conceptualization subscribe to his advanced race theory hmm okay i mean i have a good chance of passing this check but I'm not sure I actually want to do that. Um, and we've also got a couple of options regarding items we have. Uh, but first, let's do these tattoos. 